Welcome to another technology presentation from Sat Alliance. Today's presentation will focus on the ins and outs or setting up a virtual PC. The idea behind a virtual PC is it allows you to create a fully functional machine on another machine for testing purposes. So let's get started. Microsoft Virtual PC is a currently a free piece of software available from Microsoft. Simply download it and install it on your machine. Once installed we can create a new virtual machine. Run Virtual PC, select the new button to commence the wizard. What we want to do firstly is create a new virtual machine. We'll give it a name so we'll call it SPS 2003. Um, we can obviously store it in any location on our hard disk. Once we've named it we create next. We nominate the operating system of the machine. As you can see you can choose from quite a range of operating systems but we know it's going to be Windows 2003 server. Here I can adjust the RAM. Um, basically the RAM is a function of the amount of RAM that you have on the PC that you're hosting the virtual PC environment. At the moment we'll stick with 256. This can be adjusted at a later point in time. I can now use an existing hard disk or I can create a new one. So since this is a new PC, I'll create a new hard disk. Again, I nominate the location for this hard disk and can locate it anywhere on my machine. I go next. And now that I see that it's created a virtual machine for me. If I select the virtual machine and go into settings, you can see that I can adjust the memory, I can add additional hard disks if I require, I can enable something called undo disk, which is what I always do. This is allows us to store sessions and roll back sessions. Um, I can nominate which DVD player that I'm using from my host machine, as well as COM ports, and in this case, because I'm going to set up a dual NIC SPS, I'll select two network ports and I can choose which ports they are connected to on my host machine. So what I'll do is I'll make the first one local, so that's only used by the virtual machine. The second one I'll set to my network connection, so it means that I can connect out to the internet. When I'm happy with my settings, I go OK and I choose to start the virtual machine. Now the virtual machine basically boots up like a normal machine but as you can see it's running within my Windows desktop. I've booted at the moment and of course it can't find any boot device. What I have to do firstly is go up to CD and tell it to use my physical CD in the host machine. Once I've done that I hit enter. It now finds the CD, uses it as part of the virtual machine environment and will now commence the standard small business server installation from the CD. As you can see it boots up, I can hit F6 here if I want to to install additional drivers but it will have them. It will now continue on as though the machine is on a completely independent piece of hardware. The advantage we have here is that it actually isn't on independent hardware, it's simply storing it in a file on the host machine that um, allows it to be recovered um, or booted up. What I can do here is once I finish working with it, our action, I can pause the machine. So basically it suspends the operation of the machine, allows me to return to it at any point. I can reset the machine, so that's like doing a hardware reset on a normal machine. But if I select close, as you can see, I can now choose whether to turn off and save the changes, turn off and delete the changes. But normally what I want to do is I want to save the changes and save the state. This means that when I recover my machine, it will come back in exactly the same position. What I'll do here is just uncheck the commit changes to the virtual disk. So this keeps my original image plus any changes in a separate file. So if I go OK here, you'll see now that it's saving the virtual machine state and I'm back at my console. But if I now choose to start the virtual machine again, 
You'll see it boot up and it's now continue to save the state. This makes it great for doing testing. You can run up your machine, have it all booted, ready to go, and then save the state. Once the state's saved, you can then retrieve it and recover it at any point in time, rather than having to wait the whole boot up process to go through. So what I'll do here is I will just uh, close it. And again, if I choose to turn off and delete the changes, you'll basically see that my machine will return back to the point of having nothing on it. So once I boot this, and I'll have to boot off my CD-ROM again and basically go through the installation. So turning off and saving and not saving means that none of the changes that I've made on my virtual machine get retained. Again, this is a great option if you need to do testing. You can bring up a clean machine, set it all up, save the changes, load up the machine, put on some patches, do some testing, and at the end of that process, you can choose to turn off the virtual machine and delete any changes that have been made, keeping your original clean installation. So I'll close this machine. I'll turn it off, but I'll save the state. So again, this suspends my operating system in the virtual machine environment and allows me to return to it at any point in time. So for example, I've got an example here of a small business server with Service Pack 1 test system. So if I select that and I go start, you'll see that it will boot up and it will resume at the exact point at which I was working at it last time, which in this case was fiddling around with SharePoint. Obviously the bigger the machine, the more software that has been installed on it, the longer it takes to restore and also to save. But again, uh, this is a small price to pay for a completely clean test environment that basically won't consume any hardware. Typically at Saturn Alliance we use a number of virtual machines to test a variety of customer systems. So we can mimic customers who have certain installations of antivirus, um, configurations, SQL, stand, SPS Standard, SPS Premium. Um, it really gives us a huge amount of options that may not be available um, to be replicated on standard hardware. So again, this system looks exactly like a um, standard small business server system um, and at any point will function exactly the same. Okay, so again, we can go in here, I can close it down. Um, obviously, it needs more memory to operate. Um, the memory is consumed as part of the host operating system out here in my Windows XP machine. So anytime that you're running virtual machines on another host platform, you need lots of RAM. Typically, we would recommend that you look at a system with at least two gigabytes of RAM. Um, and obviously, the more RAM you have, the better. So as you can see, in this case, we have a fully functioning and installed small business server system that we can use for ongoing testing which makes it very handy. Okay, so down the bottom here in our virtual PC screen you'll see the disk activity, the hard disk activity, we can connect a virtual floppy, we can share folders and also our network activity. Up on our menu we have the ability to go to full screen mode to send a control alt delete to pause, reset or close. Um, we can look at the settings in this case, so let's have a look at the settings for this small business server system. As you can see I've set the RAM to 637 megabytes, which is not nearly enough, but in our case good enough for testing. When the machine's operational, some of these options aren't available to be changed. They can only be changed when the machine is shut down. Again, I've got two hard disks installed here. I've also got my undo disks enabled, as well as two network connectors. So once again, this is Virtual PC.